Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer. You know, I really wish that those kids that watch the channel would stop being offended by my frozen jokes. I mean, <laughs> let it go. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at my top 10 games from Come On! All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to jump right into it. First of all, we're going to take a look at my number 10. My number 10 game from Come On is... Walls of York. Walls of York is a game where players are trying to enclose, they each have a, a similar player board, and they're trying to enclose certain spaces, certain icons with walls. Essentially, you're trying to build a wall around enough icons uh, on the board and you can only do that by rolling die. You roll die and it kind of says how you can build the, the icons. Once somebody's finished and they roll icons, they're going to start collecting gold, but depending on how you've, you've, you've made your, your, your uh, area there, uh, you're going to collect a certain amount of gold. And you do gold. And you do that a few rounds, and who's ever got the most gold wins. And it sounds like it's a pretty simple game, but there's a lot of strategy. It's a lot of fun, and it's always fun to have games where you're kind of physically, with components, building things. There's kind of a toy factor there. Really enjoyed Walls of York. That is my number 10 from Come On. My number 9 is an Eric Lang design. This is Rising Sun. Now, Rising Sun is one of these big kind of heavy dudes on a map game. You've got all sorts of creatures and monsters and, and units, and, it's, and it looks great. The aesthetic is just beautiful. It's got this beautiful Japanese kind of artwork and aesthetic there. And you've got, you know, you've, you've got phases where you're moving guys and doing combat. You've got political phases. You choose these, like, mandate tokens where you can train and get more cards to become more, more powerful. And you can do diplomacy. You can essentially make an alliance with somebody. And you play some of those, those, those tokens, and you've got, like, abilities that affect both of you and then a secondary ability that anybody else can do. So it's really a fun, um, it's, it's, it's kind of a good uh, dudes on a map game. A really fun, epic dudes on a map game. Uh, that is Rising Sun. That is my number nine. My number eight is a game, one of those games that maybe didn't get enough love as, as it deserved, and this is Richard the Lionheart. Richard the Lionheart is a fun game where, you know, you can play it at different player counts, but it really shined at five, because at five you had factions, you had teams, but then you kind of had one guy in the middle that could be swayed, that could go either way, that was kind of making decisions to help or hinder one side or the other. And they were incentivized at different times to do different things. So it was actually, it, it's really fun when you play it with five. But it's kind of, you know, kind of a, kind of a, almost a worker placement-ish type thing as you're, you're placing your guys and taking advantage of different spaces and as you're getting those rewards and those things you needed from, uh, like I say, that fifth player. Um, but it's a fun game. Again, I, I wouldn't recommend it to the other player counts, but if you find it at five players, it's a lot of fun. So that is my number uh, eight. That is Richard the Lionheart. My number seven is a game, it's, it's, it's almost a deck builder. It kind of feels like a deck builder, but it's not really a deck builder. This is Clean, Queen's Necklace. Now, in Queen's Necklace, you've got a board where you're buying cards from. And, you know, you've got like 10 currency to buy the cards every round. You're, you're buying the cards you want. And the cards are sliding. They're depreciating in value. And as you're doing that, um, you've also got other cards that can, like, affect the board. you got, like, assassins that can, like, you know, you know, do things. Or other cards that can kind of manipulate what's going on. You've got a fashion track with gems that you're trying to kind of boost the, the wealth of those things and, and make it advantageous for you. But it's a very fun game, and it's kind of a lighter game. Uh, I ended up giving this one to Zach years ago, and he and his family just constantly play this game. And it's one that, you know, I, I kind of I kind of regret giving it up because I had a lot of fun with it too, but I knew he and his family would enjoy it uh, more than I would, <clears throat> and more than it would just be shit sitting on my shelf, right? But anyway, he, he got a kick out of it because it's a great game, and everybody I played it with has loved it. That is Queen's Necklace. That is my number seven. My number six might be a bit controversial because I imagine a lot of people would expect it to be higher up on the list, but this is Blood Rage, another Eric Lang design. Blood Rage is a fun game. I really enjoyed it. In fact, I, you know, I, I played it several times when I was living in Utah, and then I played it once down in Texas. I haven't played it since, and in fact, I have given away my copy to a friend of mine because, again, I just wasn't getting it to the table, but I knew they would. And Blood Rage is this great game of your Vikings, you're trying to, you, you actually, when you die, you get glory points when you go to Valhalla, but it's a fun game. It's a game of limited resources, and you're trying to make the best of what you can with the resources you have, but it's also area control. You're trying to control certain spaces, 
It's a really a very fun game. Um, and again, I'm talking about it now, and now I'm regretting giving it up. But very good game, uh, set with that great Viking mythology and the great Viking aesthetic to the game. A lot of fun. That is my number six. That is Blood Rage. My number five is a game that uh, I just played uh, late 2020, I think. And it's I played it several times, and every time it was a big hit. And this is it's almost kind of like Zombie Side on speed. It's uh, Project Elite. So Project Elite is a game where you know you're you got spaceships have crashed, crashed. There's hostile aliens, and everything's kind of playing out almost like a zombie side game. But then you've got a timer, and you roll die. And as you're rolling these die, you may take out zombies, or you may move them closer toward you. And you, you, you're, so you're, the game is just rolling as many die as fast as you can. And as you're doing it, everybody's manipulating the board, so the zombies are moving along these pre kind of prearranged tracks but you're trying to take them out as fast as you can it's frantic and it is fun it's really really a great game like i say because it's got so much uh, uh action to it i really like project elite fantastic game and that is my number five my number four is a game that is um the, boy there's a lot of pathos to this game this is the grizzled grizzled is a great game about world war one and again, it's not a game about winning so much as it is a game about surviving, if you can just get through. It is a cooperative game <clears throat> where you are all contributing cards. You have to contribute cards. But the problem is, if you get three of the same icon, and there's lots of different icons, but if you get three of the same icon, you lose. So you're trying to do everything you can not to put down a card with an icon. And if you can't, there are some other things you can do. You can try to back out of the game, in which case you'll just start the next game with those cards. But I mean, there's a lot of really fun things that are going on uh, in this game. Uh, one of the things I really like is it's a cooperative game, but you can't alpha game it because the cards you hold are hidden information. And so you can't tell people, well, okay, you need to play this card, you need to play this card. There's none of that, right? Everybody has to do the best they can on their own. And I really like it. And it's a tough game. It's a hard game to win, but it is a fun game. And it's a tense game, and you'll be sweating every game you play. So that is uh, The Grizzle. That is my number four. My number three is a game that another Eric Lang design, and this was probably, from Come On, probably his least well-received uh, big epic dudes on a map game. But I liked it, and as you can see, I liked it more than Blood Rage and Rising Sun. This is Godfather Corleone's Empire. I like this one. It's area control, but it's also you've got um, almost kind of set collection, and you've got different cards that you're trying to, to trade, and when you when you kill one of the other guys they actually go into the river you place them like they're dead in the river <clears throat> and you got the different families and it, it, it's just really a lot of fun the map is a you know the game board's a map in new york but again it's another phenomenal uh, eric lang game uh and again it's one that just did not get the love it really needed so that is godfather corleone's empire that is my number three from come on my number two is a great one of the all-time great bluff and double bluff games um it's just so much fun. This is a game you will laugh and you will laugh and you'll kick yourself and you'll laugh some more. This is Sheriff of Nottingham. Um, I actually was introduced to this game when I was in Texas. A friend had me over to his house and we played it. And like, oh my gosh, because I'd heard everybody talk about it, go on and on about it. And I was like, well, okay, we'll, 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 we'll see. And it, and it didn't look that much fun to me, but it was. I absolutely loved it. I loved that game. And then I just reviewed the latest edition that came out a couple of years ago and I really had a lot of fun with that one as well. Um, it's just, it's just like I say, it, it's all about bluff and double bluff. Or you're trying to sneak past the goods, past the sheriff, and the sheriff can ask for bribes, right? And, and it, oh man, it's, it, I really like it. You're trying to get the most gold. You want to screw over the other guy and not get screwed yourself and it just doesn't always work out that way. So much fun. That is Sheriff of Nottingham. That is my number two. My number one Simon game of all time, this is probably not a big surprise to anybody that knows me and is familiar with the channel, Zombie Side. Now, I didn't break it up into the different Zombie Side iterations. I'm just kind of blanket saying Zombie Side. Um, my go to Zombie Side of choice right now is probably Second Edition, although I still love Black Plague, and the Night of the Living Dead version is freaking cool as well. I wish they would do more IP versions of it. I know the Night of the Living Dead IP is in the public domain. That's probably why they were able to do it, but. I'd like to see more IP stuff with it, but 
Zombie Side is phenomenal. It's it's to me, it's not even really a horror game. It's got zombies in it. It's not a horror game so much as it is just an action game, and it's a puzzle, right? Okay, how am I going to manipulate these guys to 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 reach their objectives, right? And that's a solo game. But then in the multiplayer game, it, there's negotiation. Okay, you're going to have to do this, and you're going to have to do this, and I'm going to have to do this, and so that's that's a lot of fun, and I really really like that quite a bit. It's just. Again, this is another game that, game that tells a great story. It, it, it's just, you know, we got the scenario, and, and you kind of feel like you're there in the midst of this apocalypse, and you're trying to just survive. I love Zombie Side. I love all the iterations, some more than others. But I'm a big, big fan of this uh, series of games. And I, more stuff, by, by all means, bring it on. So that is Zombie Side. That is my number one all-time favorite game from Come On. Well, thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. Let me know what you think. Are there games from Come On that you would put on the list that I didn't? Or are there games that I put on there that you don't think should be there? Or is there a problem with the order? I expect to hear something on that. Um, but go ahead, let me know. I'm always excited and interested to hear what people have to say and what their ideas are on these games. So please let me know. I really appreciate it. And also please check out my other channel that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about uh, military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check it out. Please subscribe. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I got a confession to make. I haven't spoken to my girlfriend in four years. I thought it'd be rude to interrupt her. Everybody has got to get oxygen.